So I have two radiators here, the Phobia G Charger and the Black Ice Nemesis Hardware Labs 360. Both pretty much the same size. This one's probably a bit thinner, but both 360mm radiators. Now, I'm going to tell you guys how this one here is able to achieve more cooling than this one. Stick around and I'll show you guys why. So we've got two radiators, basically both the same thickness. Now, what we have to address here is something called the FPI. Now, what this means is the amount of fins per inch that are within the radiator. Now this is also known as surface area. The more FPI you have, the greater the surface area you have of cooling. So both of these radiators are 360 millimeter radiators. This one might be a tiny bit thicker, but for the sake of this video, we'll just say that they're the exact same thickness. This particular radiator has 10 FPI, that is 10 fins per inch. Now if you look carefully, you can see that you can see through it. Now I'll put this one up as a comparison. It is harder to see through than this one here. That is because this one is 16 FPI, it has more fins per inch, meaning that it has greater cooling potential because of the amount of surface area it has. Now if I move this in closer, you'll also know that this is a split fin design. So how do radiators work? Well what happens is the liquid transfers the heat through the system and through the radiator. Now the fans are designed to push air through and collect the heat from the fins. Now, because this has more fins, it has more cooling area. Now, they might be the same size radiators, but because of the more fins, it has more cooling potential and more surface area. So the air will go through and pull the air out into the atmosphere. So when would you actually notice a difference in cooling between these two very similar radiators, but with different FPIs? Ultimately, with a simple loop, you will not notice the difference between these. When you will notice the difference is when you start to add some load to the system. Now, this means graphics cards, CPU in the loop, uh, maybe multiple graphics cards as a better example. That is when this one will start to outperform the other one. And as I said, the reason for this is because this has more surface area when cooling. Now that is good to know and all, but what are the repercussions of having such a fin density within a radiator? So yes, this radiator is able to achieve more cooling, but it comes at a cost. You're gonna be adding some more noise to your system. This is due to the fact that because the fins are so tightly compacted together within the radiator, it needs more static pressure to get the air through and to the other side. So this is where static pressure fans come in handy. However, they are louder than normal fans. You may need to run your fans at a higher RPM to get the air through, which means you are adding noise to the system. Now again, this all depends on how much is in your liquid cooling loop that you want to cool. For just a normal CPU GPU loop, it is fine to use the lower FPI and it'll perform much more silenter and perform exactly the same in terms of cooling. So one way you can avoid adding extra noise to the system is instead of running a 360 millimeter radiator with high fin density, you could purchase a longer radiator with a lower FPI. Therefore, you can use less noisy fans in the system but yet achieve the same surface area as what you would achieve here, therefore creating a lower noise within the system. So you gotta remember, pushing air through a wider gap means less noise. The air turbulence that is created from static pressure fans trying to push through a really thin gap is where the noise starts to come in. So remember, as I said, the bigger the fin spacing, the quieter your system's going to be. However, when it comes to putting your system under load, meaning multiple GPUs and the CPU in the loop, they're not going to perform as well as say, a fin design where they are compacted together and have a higher FPI. This can also be compensated by adding more radiators to the loop with a lower FPI still keeping your loop nice and quiet. So that's just something that the user has to weigh up when buying radiators and fans for their system. Overall, what I would recommend for your system is buy the biggest radiator that fits within your case specs. Therefore, you get the most cooling potential. If you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator, it's usually good enough to be able to cool your normal loop that which contains a CPU and a GPU. So you don't have to worry too much about FPI. The main instance when FPI comes into play is when you start adding more cards and that's building up more heat within the system. So you need more ways of trying to dissipate that heat out of the system. So really it's up to you guys whether to weigh up if it's worth having the extra noise in the system to dissipate that heat.
So once again, I do recommend trying to fit the biggest radiator for your case spec into the system to increase your surface area for a silent build. One more thing I want to add is if you have a radiator with say 10 FPI versus a radiator with 20 FPI, it does not necessarily mean it does double the cooling to it. FPI is only a measurement of how many fins there are per inch and the surface area that could potentially be cooled by a fan. Now, if you did put normal fans on one of these high FPI radiators, then you will fall into some problems. Some of these fans aren't strong enough to actually push the air through. The higher static pressure fans are designed for these types of radiators and work perfectly within the system. However, as I've said, add extra noise. So I hope that has cleared up a bit of mis misconception about radiators in a water cooling loop. Bigger radiators are not always better. You can always buy the high FPI fans, which would probably accommodate for say a 480 millimeter radiator of this capacity. So really it's just up to the user whether or not they want their system to be noisy or not. And adding more thickness or size to your radiator choice can obviously compensate for the amount of surface area and therefore the fan noise, depending on whether you use static pressure or normal fans. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick guide. Remember to leave a like on the video and comment down below. What other guides do you want to see? Tell me if this guide helped you. Remember, watch it back if you're not too sure. I pretty much covered the general basics of choosing a water cooling radiator and what to look for in terms of whether or not you want silence or not. I hope you all enjoyed guys. Let me know down below what guide you want next and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.